What's up guys? Good morning, good afternoon, and good night, wherever you guys are. Um, I hope you guys are having a great day and a great night so far, but before you go out and go about your days, I did want to make this video on my comprehensive pickups during the past two months, which are October and November. As you can see, there are clothes laid out on my desk and not a lot of stuff that you guys might have expected. But I do want to stress upon the fact that I'm more of a quality over quantities guy. I plan on making smarter and longer investments in the sense that these are the clothes that I will be wearing throughout the whole year or every season. This is pretty much me and the expression of clothes. Um, yeah, so let's get on with this video. So I don't know how I'm going to do this video, I think I'm going to go chronologically. I think I'm going to start off with October pickups and then kind of move on towards my November pickups. So I'm going to start from my left to right, or in your, I guess in your perspective, right to left. So, my very first pickup, which I purchased back in early October I'd say, is this denim jacket from Levi's. I don't know if you guys can see from the lighting, but I bought this back in late September and I went to this prefecture called Koenji, which is a small town with just vintage shops. And Koenji is known for that vintage inspiration. So you see a lot of designers like uh, Jerry Lorenzo, um, Greg Lauren going to these places to draw inspiration from all these vintage shops. And each shop is themed differently, so one might be more military based, the other might be more t-shirt based, rock, hip-hop, so on and so forth. This one I got from a store called... Shit, I forget. But I bought it from a store in Koenji, so if you guys do come visit Tokyo, I'll take you guys there. What I really like about this jacket is just the attention to detailing. You kind of see the um, damaged patches inside the jacket. Um, all the Levi's tag has been kind of destroyed just out of pure wear and you see the collars being patched up. You don't get a lot of watches like this and my honestly to, to me my favorite denim jacket was the Fear of God OG Indigo denim jacket but you know I don't think it justified the price of a thousand dollars for a denim jacket so I went with a tenth of a fraction for that price. I bought this for a hundred dollars. Um, and the detailing is honestly impeccable. I think it's better than the Fear of God denim jackets. Um, you see a little dirty wash going along the sleeves with a lot of damaging going on um, everywhere, generally everywhere throughout the whole jacket. I don't know if these are blood stains or ketchup stains or just, I don't know what it is, but small stuff like this kind of tells a story of the previous owner who had this. All the buns are getting rustier and rustier by everywhere. I guess I'm more intrigued by the owner who owned this just because it kind of tells a piece of story. He could have been a fucking mechanic or a biker or a rock star, who knows? I don't know, but the point is, I just love the fact that clearly he was very emotionally attached to his denim jacket. Um, Evidence is obviously clear throughout the whole jacket where there are patches and just repair marks. The fit wise is very different from the Fear of God denim jackets. This is more a fitted look, so you know, I kind of steered away from oversized clothing. So, one word of advice is that when you do buy clothes, please make sure that it fits well with your whole entire wardrobe so you can wear with different outfits. So, the next piece of my recent pickup is a great champion hoodie. Um, nothing too special here, but I do want to mention that this is a very old piece made back in the 80s and 90s. And the one thing that I really like about this hoodie is a fit, which tends to be more boxy and cropped. Sort of like the Vetements hoodie, but without the uh, logo on it. Um, so initially it had the Champion logo on the left side of my chest, but I sort of picked it out with a tweezer, so I'm left with a blank hoodie. I don't know, I like my clothes plain and simple with little to no branding on them, so this was a perfect cop for me. Also, don't tell me you can't find steals because I paid $20 for this hoodie. And stuff like this, it'll cost probably 20 times more in a boutique shop or a bigger fashion label. You can't really remake this. The result of this hoodie is derived from, you know, countless wears and tears, hundreds of washes, so on and so forth. But always try to find clothes 
that can complement with your entire wardrobe. So, for example, I can wear this hoodie with literally any jacket that I own. I can wear this underneath a denim jacket, uh, overcoat, uh, leather jacket, bomber jacket, you know, all kinds of jackets. But I personally think this is just a perfect gray hoodie. Here it is, if you guys see it. As you can see, it's very wide and cropped, very boxy. That's how I like it. I do have slimmer fitting hoodies, but for vintage shit like this, I do gear towards more of the boxier and baggier look. So, yeah, that's it for the hoodie. Next up, so the next piece I bought very recently, I say around late October, early November ish, but. This is the Billy Los Angeles Parachute Cargo Pants. Um, you know, a lot of you guys may be thinking that I only wear trousers and jeans, but to be frank, I'm still experimenting with a variety of clothes with different, you know, cuts, styles, and colors. And you know, and cargo pants are one of those pieces that you can wear a couple times, throw them back in your closet, and bring them back out whenever you seem fit. Um, in short, I don't think it's going to be a regretful purchase just because of its simplicity and practicality. But these are cool because it's not too loud nor too simple and they do have the right amount of detailing in them to not make them so boring. It's got these silver rivets in the button area and along the cargo pockets and they also have this like small ton things hanging in the backside of your pants which I think is a you know cool small detail. So I, don't, I haven't really figured out what I'm gonna be wearing these with, but I think I'm gonna go more oversized in the top area. So for jacket wise, I'll be probably going with oversized bombers, coats, oversized hoodie or sweatshirt. I haven't really wore them out yet, so I'm gonna definitely break these in. So yeah, that's it for cargo pants. That's from Billy Los Angeles. Moving on to another pair of pants which I bought from the Issei Miyake mainline shop. These are the forest green wool trousers. I guess there's nothing too special about these. Um, I just fell in love with the colors because it really resonated with the upcoming fall and winter season. I'm just a sucker for neutral and earthy colors because it's easy to complement with other pieces of clothing. These also have a long enough inseam that covers a shoelace area of my sneakers. I don't know if it's just me, but I never found any attraction in cropped pants, unless I go out to like a fancy dinner or a professional business meeting. But I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you guys gear towards more longer or shorter fitting trousers? Or do you guys not have any opinion on trousers? Let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are on trousers and how do you like them fit on your body. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. There's not much going on in these trousers. Pictures will be coming and please like and comment on my Instagram pictures. So let's move on to the more exciting portion of the video or I guess more expensive purchases of my recent pickups. These are the Off-White Complex Con Air Force Ones. I've been looking for these for a very long time because as you guys know, I am a big sucker for the Air Force One silhouette and as well as the color. So these are more like the grail of sneakers as far as 2018 goes. These have the exposed foam on the tongue and the heel area as well as the deconstructed silver swooshes and obviously how can you miss the air quotation on the midsoles. But I think one feature that drew me most about these sneakers is the quality of the leather. These age so nicely and get softer each wear. And mind you, I've only worn them a couple of times so as far as the leather goes, it still feels pristine but I'll definitely get my wear of these. Yes, I am very OCD about creasing, so I tend to go half size down on my Air Force Ones. So I'd recommend you to do the same. And also, shout out to Go for hooking these up. I bought them for a very good price, and I know size nines are the more desirable size in terms of sneakers, so these are going for upwards of three racks. So make sure you do your research before copying. And I don't know if this is true, but to my knowledge, I've heard that Complex Con Air Force Ones have been restocked just randomly. I don't know if it's true, but just the epitome 
of a perfect silhouette of a sneaker. So let's move on to accessories that I've been buying this past month. This is my most recent jewelry pickup. This is the Chrome Hearts 22 karat gold pave diamond uh, cross pendant. I... Honestly, initially I was never a fan of Chrome Hearts, but the more I looked into the brand, the more I appreciated the history behind it. This was a very long-term investment for me and I'm not looking to sell this anytime soon. It's not cheap, I paid a pretty penny for this. They go for a fucking absurd amount, bro. Like, I sometimes don't understand the pricing, but I gotta say, it is a 22 karat gold, which is very uncommon in terms of jewelry making. So, 22 karat gold is just below 24 karat gold and any gold that's made out of 24 carats is borderline malleable, so it's very fragile and I think Chrome Arts did a very good job making it 22 karat gold so it's in that perfect balance of good shade of gold as well as its durability but this charm is perfect sizing for me I don't like anything too big and flashy um, I tend to just wear my necklace inside my t-shirt anyway, so I don't really need a big charm. The chain though I bought it separately from a private jeweler in Japan, just because it cuts out the middleman so I don't have to pay that premium price. Um, this is an 18 karat gold, so the 22 karat gold chains in Chrome Hearts go for upwards of $3,000 depending on the length of your chain, but I went with a 22 inch length chain. Yeah guys, there's not much to say. Um, just look into Chrome Hearts a little bit more before buying it just because if you kind of buy it without knowing the history behind um, Chrome Hearts, it's like you're not really truly appreciating the brand and why they price it in certain ways and stuff like that. So yeah guys, that's it for the Chrome Hearts 22 karat gold pave diamond cross pendant. So along the lines of Chrome Hearts, this is another piece of accessory that I picked up very recently. Um, this is the Chrome Hearts Loaded Dagger Belt. I don't know if you know me, but I'm really into belts because, like all my pieces, I can wear this every day with almost anything, so it works perfectly with my wardrobe. I bought this from the New York Chrome Hearts store, as it's not available anywhere else in the world, to my knowledge. Um, I think my size is sold out nationwide, actually, according to my friend Hugh. Also, shout out to Hugh for proxying me this and Connor for showing me this because when I first saw it, I knew immediately that I needed it in my wardrobe. This wasn't a cheap purchase by any means. I paid a hefty for it, but I treat it as a long-term investment because I know that based on its rarity, the value is only bound to go up or remain unchanged. Anyway, each dagger is pretty much worth around $130 to $150, I believe. And there are 20 of these throughout the whole belt, so yeah, you guys do the math. Um, again, very cool detailing, high quality leather. It's got a lot of weight to it, so yeah, it's gonna be very heavy on your waist. Easy to style, goes well with almost all kinds of pants, so I'm super happy with this purchase. I don't think I'll be ridding this anytime soon. So yeah, this was a Chrome Arch loaded dagger belt. There's not much to speak on it. Um, just a very beautiful belt to wear on a day-to-day -day basis, so I don't know if you guys are looking into purchasing one I think your best luck is to really just go into the store and ask them if they have this piece because I know that it's sold out nationwide in the United I know that these sell out very quick and it's considered a very rare Chrome Hearts accessory So yeah, that's pretty much it for my pickups If you guys do want to see more of these kind of videos Please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. I think I'm gonna do a Q&A soon too, so DM me some of your questions that you wanna know about me and I'll try to answer them as fast and as responsibly as possible. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next one. Peace.